Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source for what's happening now in the world of electric cars. Today we're going to talk about Tesla semi trucks competitor, possible competitors. It's kind of an odd story and I have another odd story about a new Chinese startup that just kind of came out of nowhere and just looks like they're claiming to take over the entire electric car industry in like three seconds. So, and of course, the comment of the day that has something to do with uh, a Model 3 because we just got to talk about it, of course. So those stories and more, and we're going to start right now. All right, so welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're interested in uh, what is happening in the world of electric cars, you came to the right place, please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button down there and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward, but most importantly, become a part of this community. All right, let's talk about a possible Tesla semi truck competitor. Now this company is called Thor Trucks and they are they came up with this uh, little thing over here. It's called ET1. I'm assuming ET stands for electric truck. Now they've, they've been around for a while and there were some people already taking pictures and videos of their prototypes being driven around Los Angeles, but now they finally released their pictures and kind of announced that they're moving forward with this. Now let me give you another, um, another uh, sort of a um, picture of this truck, right? So uh, it looks pretty good. Now the reason I feel this story is kind of a little bit weird is because um, you see the um, the truck is not really something that they're making. They kind of are taking a, 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 an example of Tesla did originally where they converted a lot of Celie's body, right? Uh, and put some, you know, electric drivetrain and a battery and, and created the very first Roadster. So what they're doing, they're actually converting an existing trucks and, and actually different parts from different trucks into electric uh, semi trucks. Uh, and this is uh, one of their uh, examples. I mean, this is what they're uh, going to be producing moving, for moving forward. They're going to, they're saying they're going to start a production next year. But you know, this is not really production. This is more like a, a conversion. Now, that's all fine. I mean, actually, that may not even be that bad of an idea because you know, there are a bunch of semi trucks out there that Maybe instead of buying a new one, you can convert. But here's the thing. Uh, well, two things here, really. First of all, this is going to cost $150,000 which I don't quite understand why anybody would go for it because, you know, you can buy a Tesla semi for $150,000. So you guys let me know what I'm missing here because I read a bunch of different articles about it and I don't really see why would anybody do that. But most importantly, with a full load, that truck for $150,000 will only go about 100 miles. Once again, why would you get this conversion if you can buy a Tesla truck that can go much further? So um, I, I don't, I, you know, this is, I mean, this is an official story. And by the way, I went to their website. Usually, you know, car manufacturers, especially up and coming car manufacturers, they have a website, they release their videos and photos. They're sometimes even more proactive than uh, a regular media sites for other automakers. But this website is extremely simple, uh, thortrucks.com. As a matter of fact, most of their images are not even loading. Their social media is very blah. They just have a few pictures. And really, these pictures that I'm showing you guys, this is like pretty much all I found uh, that actually belongs to Thor. There are some other pictures that other people took of them, but that's, you know, I don't want to... Uh, so, so this is a very odd story. I would be interested. Um, um, well, Bromance in the chat room says, wow, that's stupid. Uh, Okay, I, you know this is uh, this this uh, yeah I have to say that this this is a little bit uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, weird. Lucky never in the chat room says it's just fake. Well, I don't think it's a fake, but I just don't really understand what the purpose of it. Right? Well, and uh, all right, which brings me to the next story, and I'll tell you about it just in one second. But the reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for. Tesla. Now, uh, let's move on to uh, another story that's probably even more odd. So there is a company and they've existed for, for a couple of years, I guess. Uh, w, oh, gee, I forgot now. WM, WM Motors, I think. No, there's, I'm getting one of the WV Motors, I think. Uh, I should probably rehearse this at some point. Uh, but anyway, but they came out with a, a brand, I guess, or brand of cars, Weltmeister, which is a German really name, which is kind of weird for a Chinese company to use a German name. But, you know, I guess it's called world champion, like for soccer, like a soccer term or, or a horse racing term. So anyway, so this is an SUV now originally when, so this story gets really bizarre. So originally when they released uh, uh, the uh, prototype of this, like the picture of the prototype of this, um, 
the uh, people uh, people uh, i believe electric the 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 news uh, news publication electric noticed that it was pretty much a ripoff of uh, i believe a mitsubishi highlander with a little bit of photoshop stuff around it so that was a little odd now once they now released i believe on monday they finally released their prototype their their car and it looks pretty damn similar to mitsubishi right so that's weird but i mean I understand, and I mean, there's only so much you can do with SUV, but this was a pretty blunt ripoff. Now, here's the weird thing. They just got an investment of about a billion dollars from uh, one, one of his Tencent is, you know, the company that also invested into Tesla. So some pretty legitimate investors, uh, Chinese investors, and they're claiming that they're going to start making these cars not in two years, not in three years, not maybe. They're saying they're going to start building them in the middle of next year. So we're talking about six months from now, and they're going to make 50,000 of them just the next year. Now, I, I mean, I don't know if it's just me, but these numbers just do not add up. First of all, where the hell is a factory? Where, is there a technology? Who, 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 who has that technology? Is there a prototype that is actually working? And most importantly, like, how are you going to create your very first car and ramp up, you know, on the very first factory that I don't really know if they have and ramp up the production and make 50,000 cars? I'm telling you guys, this is weird. I'm almost thinking, like, did I not understand something here in my misread but i've read all the articles i could about this and that's what every single article is claiming even electric so electric is usually pretty uh, good as far as analyzing what's happening and even they don't seem like they don't really blink an eye about it so i gotta tell you this is a weird story it you know, if it's happening it's amazing of course but i don't uh, I don't quite understand this. Um, uh, Lucky Never in the chat room says, what are your views on Dyson EVs? I don't have any views because I don't have a prototype. I think it's great if they want to get into this. They said they've been developing it for like a decade. Well, let's see it and then we'll, you know, have an, a, an, an opinion. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, I, okay. So I, there you go. Uh, by the way, um, just a reminder, I have my Patriot, uh, Patriot, Patreon page. Uh, for those of you guys who want to see some exclusive footage uh, and and uh, um, some of the uh, behind the scene footage, uh, which I do have, you know, for example, just you know, as you know, as you know, I fly drones for some of my on location segments and for my calendar segment that I did, and you know, it usually looks pretty good, just like you've seen the segment about the supercharger report I just did, which is still on my homepage. But sometimes, as you can see, the drones crash. What happens next? All right, well, what happens next, you can see on Patreon page because I want to provide some uh, good content for you guys when you contribute uh, to the show. So it's in the description of this video. All right, so this brings me to my favorite segment as always, which is comment of the day. And comment of the day today comes from uh, Patrick Carroll. Uh, he says, well, we were talking about the uh, Model 3, uh, uh, sort of a, not a pile up, but a little heaven that I found uh, in, um, uh, this is a footage uh, that I have, that I found in um, here in Fremont, at their delivery center, there's a very similar one in Los Angeles, and Patrick says, that's nice and all, but why aren't they being delivered to customers? Cars are meant to be driven, not sitting in a stockpile state. Uh, I've yet to see a real customer video of the Model 3. Well, the reason you haven't seen a real customer of the Model 3, because, you know, right now they're only been selling them to the employees and per Tesla's policies, those employees are not technically allowed to talk to the media or even take their own videos. So that, with that out of the way, um, why are they sitting there? I have to say that I, once again, haven't seen an explanation for that. I wonder that myself. And I, first of all, as you can see from my video and the videos that other people took and the one in the Los Angeles area, those cars are pretty dusty. They've been there for a while, for a few days. And yes, there are a lot of them at the same time. Why that's happening? I don't know. I mean, there are a few, a few I mean, there are a few theories, right? One, you can say, well, you know, they are uh, training their staff still to be able to, you know, you know, delivery is, is a skill that you have to have. You have to explain what the car's about, right? You're going to do paperwork. So, you know, and, and, and they need staff to do that. I mean, I thought they've been practicing already when they've been delivering it to their own employees. That was part of the whole thing. So I don't quite understand why they need to be sitting there if, if they're training the employees. Second thing is, you know, there are reports where, you know, some of the cars, they, they're like 99.9% .9 put together, but it's like one small part is missing. So they take it out of the factory and they install that part, you know, one or two, three days later. So that could be something, right? I mean, it's, I think it's a pretty reasonable explanation. 
Um, my only other guess, and you guys go ahead and let me know in the chat room, in the comments, you know, if you're watching the replay, what, um, um, and you know, yeah, Cinema Writer says there's a lot of dust from the fires in Los Angeles, which is a fair point, but we don't have any fires here in Fremont, California, and they were pretty dusty. I would say two, three, or four days even. So, um, uh, but good point about the uh, LA location. But at the same time, so my third guess would be is that they are, they have made a bunch of sort of uh, uh, a com you know, combos, the configurations that they thought would be the most common. And they just kind of wanted to kind of, you know, prepare them for those who are ready to configure. So once people configure those common configurations, they would already have those cars for them. So, um, you know, I, so those are my guesses. But to be honest with you, I don't have a good answer and I haven't seen a good answer out there, um, you know, uh, at all. Now, so a cinema writer also in the chat room says everything in China is on a uh, massive scale. And he is commenting, obviously, on the story of uh, the uh, Weltmeister. I understand it's on a big scale and I, I think it's cheap labor and all of that stuff. But you still have to have staff and technology and build a building in the factory and make it all work and still start making cars. I mean, just, be, you know, it's not um, even a people problem or a, a amount of people problem. So, um, George in the chat room says, where exactly is this delivery location? Well, one is in Fremont, about a, a mile, mile away from the factory. And another one is in, I believe, Delray, uh, California, near the SpaceX. So, um, yeah, I mean, if uh, so I just discovered that delivery location is brand new. There's also brand new delivery, not sorry, delivery cost. Uh, um, Service center near Freeman Factory, also I just brand new, so I visited them only a couple of days ago, so I didn't know that uh, at all. So um, yeah, so a lot of interesting, weird stories, but nevertheless, they're here. I just want to tell you guys about it. Please let me know in the comment section. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that always helps the video to do well. So um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a weird. Uh, sort of a news day. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you, of course, tomorrow at 11 a.m. as usual. Other than that, remember to stay charged.